Hi, John, Echo, and the Spooky Doo team. This is Kanika here, and I'm here to share not just my and my partner's Spooky Doo journey. Spooky Doo has been superbly special for my partner and I. I'm actually sitting in the Scala field. In our personal experiences, my partner and I have uh, literally gone off all our, our vitamin and multivitamin multivitamin and mineral supplements we hardly take them we used to take them to support and supplement our well-being but i've been using the daily wellness protocol and my hair has just exploded in its growth the skin's gotten uh, beautiful the dh experimental frequencies i've been experimenting with a lot of them we have such good strength in our body we don't fall ill to an extent that my partner has hay fever peter he has hay fever but this time i've started using the immune super booster and oh my god it is magic uh we recently this year purchased the remotes as well so we use our dna clipping and we put our clippings in it and uh it's just been so beautiful and profound and i have always been so i pray daily i meditate daily and i've been sitting in the scala field and meditating and praying and my psychic abilities my connection to the divine if i just want to put it in a nutshell is just increasingly becoming so potent i've been using the 12 strand dna activation as well and the dh experimental frequencies just to see how it goes and the the effects are so magnificent in our, on our physical bodies and our like um, energetic field i'm an energy healer i take clients through um quantum healing sessions while sitting in the field so that they can also i can be a clearer conduit and send these energies as well by pure quantum entanglement right and if people were to not believe this all this physical proof shows what a gem of a product this is i can't like recommend this more to anybody like so yes much love and gratitude thank you for listening and uh, i could share so much more but i'd like to wrap this up now thank you Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I am joined for our bi weekly on my channel and then the other bi weekly every other week on Catherine's channel with my friend Catherine Edwards. Most of you guys know who Kat, this beautiful lady is, but if you don't know, obviously all of her information will be down in the description box below. We, we alternate every other week from my channel to her channel. So we got, I mean, I say this all the time, Catherine. I think we both say this. We, as much as we struggled on YouTube with like the establishment and the powers that be, we literally have probably the coolest people that watch our show. Really. We really do. I really think we've got the people that are really looking to make a difference in the world. I really do. They're just a really nice supportive bu uh, bunch. And you can always see if someone in the comments is struggling with something, you can see the support flood in and, you know, this is what we need more of. We really do support each other and be there for each other. And I think that's the true definition of like a truther is that we're trying yeah. to afford and trying to find the truth. We don't, we're seeking the truth and we're trying to like, you know, the s sensational stuff is fun and gossipy and scandalous, but at some point we have to like step back and like take our power back. And I think that's for us. I know that's for you and me. That's the kind of what we, the, the trajectory we want to be on. And I think that's why a lot of our, our audience too are trying to like, not be a part of the problem, but be part of the solution. And that, of course, starts with understanding our own selves and the, the complexities of, of, of what we are in, in this timeline and the power that, that we actually do possess and having to go through that and find that in order to, to change. And, you know, it's, it's hard work, but it's, it's also enlightening and, and it's also fun. And it's, it's um, I mean, the stuff we're, we talked if you missed last week, guys, from Catherine's channel, I'm going to put it down below because we were kind of, this is kind of like a part two. 
of um of what we're going to talk about. And this is for you and me, Catherine. This is we have a lot of common ground off of YouTube. Like before yeah. we met each other, this is was kind of our focus. You know, you coming from the science world, uh, being a biologist, and me coming from the philosophy world, but kind of meeting in the middle because they both mirror each other. And so, you guys, we're going to be talking about kind of about the energetic body and the correlation between the physical body and the organs and the energetic body. And I, before we get into it, guys, I just want to advertise Catherine's website quickly because um, that's the beautiful thing. One of the beautiful things about you, Catherine, is that you are a biologist. And so for someone like me, I come from a very like woo-woo philosophy perspective, whereas you're actually looking at the human body as, as a specimen almost. And, um, I think, are you, oh, there, you're, I thought you were frozen for a second there. So, um, is there, what do you, what do you got coming up, Catherine, before we get into it? Or what are ways that people can contact you? Like, what are some things that before we get into it, that you offer your clients to help them kind of gain this understanding back of their own body? What I really do, a bit similar to you, is is that I really try and sort of educate people as much as possible about, okay, these are all the challenges facing us from the air, from the water, from the food, from the stress, and what can you do about it? So everything I work with is as natural as possible, um, really, really fair. I mean, in this day and age, you've got to be so careful if you're using products or technologies that you're really vetting them, because every tool can be used for good or bad. Um, so really, in a nutshell, it's about a lot of understanding for people about, oh, why am I feeling this, whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, and most importantly, what are some choices I've got about what I can do about it? So they can work with me privately and consults. My Instagram, I do a lot on Instagram, um, just sharing help. And also the products on the page, a bit like the ones you get sponsored by, is all the ones I only ever recommend a product if I've really tried and tested it myself so that you know that you can really trust it. Absolutely. Integrity is so important. I Again, I, I, I'm glad you brought up your Instagram because I'm going to tag Catherine's Instagram down below as well. You've grown your Instagram so much. And it's it's great because you give like just kind of little snippets of information and and that's kind of it, it gets people thinking and one thing too before we get into it you know i think sometimes what's complex about a human being is that all of our lungs do the same thing our heart does the same thing we have the template our templates are the same of our physical body but yet we are all of us are so complex and different that sometimes like especially in your instagram like sometimes you'll give a tip but that might not be a tip for somebody it depends on where you are in balance where where and that's going to be different for different people depending on you know we in the the philosophical world we call it karma and i know people have a kind of a weird view of karma in the western world again all karma is is cause and effect it's just all yeah. it it's your work that's all it is it's nothing to be afraid of we all have it and so um that's the important thing about like i you know, we look at the body, we know, we kind of spoke about this last week, like we know like the kidneys, you know, from a very physical sense, the kidneys cleanse and detox, and then they send into the bladder and pee out what you don't need. But the kidneys also represent like a fear of the future, the liver, yeah. the anger, the heart, joy, the spleen. Um, oh yeah, I just, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> the anger. The, well, do you want, actually, that's a big well, one. Just because there were some really key ones, I think. Yes. That really useful for people to talk through yeah i'll tell you guys as i was saying it catherine was pinging it to me so that we're on the same track here and that's a big one though catherine because i will tell you because most of the time we think like liver problems like alcoholics and yeah. i'm not i'm not opposed to drinking but i don't drink that much because of my setup of my i just can't you know i'll drink at special occasions and a few years back my boyfriend suggested i do a liver cleanse and i thought he was mm -hmm. crazy because i don't I didn't think my liver was in, in trouble, but man, did it knock me for a loop. And so the the liver, and there's so much, many of us that have anger issues and we don't actually know we have anger issues. Right? Absolutely. I think most people, I'm having to keep moving around because the lovely sun's out in the UK <laughs> and it keeps moving through my blinds. But that's such a good point because there's so many clues and so many different levels that we can look at about what the body is telling us. And, you know, we can talk about the left and the right side of the body. We can talk about, you know, I've got my lovely Louise Hay book here, my metaphysical anatomy. We've yeah. got you and I have spoken about the body holds, holds a score before, before. But whether you're talking about a Vedic or Chinese or any of the ancient 
traditional medicines basically it's been very well recognized for a long while that certain emotions are associated with certain organs and sometimes like you said you know we immediately think of liver about oh alcohol for example but actually sort of repressed anger is stored in the liver i mean obviously other toxins are as well and this is why sometimes just going to move out here to the sun uh, that's why it's so important because you know if your body is taking on toxins from any and all of our bodies are at the moment you know air food water mind toxins and everything when you realize that that's going to be like oh okay i'm in an environment where there's toxins coming in all the time from you know ones we can see ones we can't see therefore i do need to support my liver a bit more how would i know and well i might be getting some physical symptoms but also there might be emotional and even though say the liver is associated with anger that can be both ways there's always the yin and yang of it so for me people wouldn't accuse me of suppressing my anger I think I must have some Italian blood I let it all out other people will suppress their anger and then it's really stored in the liver so it, it's not always manifested in the way that people think is the obvious and that's the thing, too, with these emotions, like having anger isn't a bad thing. I mean, yeah. there's wisdom gained from anger. It's just how we suppress it and deal with it that can cause the the toxicity, you know. And, of course, like dealing with anger, you know, I've talked about this before. Magdalene's Missing Gospel, she talks about the wisdom of the wrathful person. That does not mean that you are vigilante. Mm -hmm. That does not mean you swing at people. But if you learn how to process anger in a, in a, in a, a, a way of wisdom, that can inspire change. Right. That can inspire world events have been inspired by by anger, you know, and, and anger does also come from a place of being hurt. You know, we for me, yeah. like, I process I cry when I'm angry. I know a lot of people do that. Like I just start crying when I'm angry. Maybe that's my Scorpio moon. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, so we, 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 we react differently depending on our perceptions of life. And the body is so beautiful in that way because the body is just communicating with us. That's all it's doing. It's not punishing us. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to help us figure out where where we're out of alignment and where and that's where dis-ease comes from, right? It's where it's where that, you know, you can have my, my grandfather, who was a surgeon, used to say this all the time, like smoking cigarettes, for example. He would do surgeries on people's lungs and he would say like it would be the damnedest thing. Like he would have a patient who was a two pack a day smoker and he'd open them up and their lungs would be perfectly healthy. And mm -hmm. then you have somebody who never smoked and they would have horrific lungs and so what is that telling you that even though we know certain actions do cause things like alcohol can cause li liver dan it's not that's not the end all be all right there's yeah. a consciousness that's also happening that's running through and that's part of the energetic body right it's like this energetic we call it prana in um in sanskrit they call it chi in uh, chinese medicine it's this life force that moves through the through the fascia through the organs through and that's carrying information and that's depositing and that's the beautiful thing about the mind i think is the mind being you know this kind of conductor is that the mind as an organ is meant to it's got a, a job to do and that's to keep you alive and so what's it's, it's taking in patterns and then storing information like we store information in our computers but what happens we're both complaining before we got on like both of us are having computer issues today i know it's because i got a lot of crap on my computer so what happens when our computers get overloaded is they break down well so yeah. with the body especially like you know one of the most interesting topics that i've been researching a lot too is burnout and how burnout yeah affects the body too when the mind just simply just shuts down because it's too much it's been burnt out and how that can affect the body it can put the body into a depression it can put the body into deep sleep it can you know because it's just shutting down um because there's a resistance so um you know and uh yeah the, the burnout such a good point to raise because everyone's heard talk about stress you know we we all know that stress absolutely impacts the body massively in a negative way um it's not if it's when it's going to show you and one of the things i do is iridology reading the iris the color bit of the eyes to detect inherited strengths and weaknesses current health conditions developing health conditions and in iridology and in a lot of traditional medicines we talk about different constitutional types and it's a bit like when you're learning, you know, when you're 10 and you're learning biology, it's a different level that you describe mm -hmm. it when you're 16, when you're 18, when you're doing a PhD. But 
When in, at a very basic level, people talk about strong and weak constitutions. But say if you take a weak constitution, it doesn't mean you're a weak person in that sense of mind. It means that your body, as soon as it starts going out of ba balance, will tell you very quickly. So we all know that people do genuinely have different pain thresholds. And some people, we laugh about man flu. But, you know, some people will get the slightest thing wrong and take to their beds. And that's because their body tells them the first sign that something's going out of balance. And we can see this constitutionally. I trained in iridology, so I see it in the eyes. Other people will church see by tongue or nail analysis or pulse analysis, all the different ways you can tell. Um, and then other people have a really strong constitution and we tend to think that's good. I've got a good, strong constitution. And it can be because you don't succumb to things easily. However, the downside is that by the time you know that you've got a problem, it will be very well developed, which means it's much harder for you to rectify it. So those are two ends of the scale and there's everything in between. But this is the thing. It's like everything has got a positive and a negative sign of it. It's not that, oh, you've got a good constitution and you've got a bad one. There's pros and cons. But the more you inform yourself about your body and listen to it the more you can rate the right decisions for you so someone who's got say uh what we would classify as a weaker constitution where they show the problems earlier for you you might want to when you understand that you can sort of not take to your bed so easy because uh, it's okay my body's showing me the first sign let me address it now but it's nothing to worry about right. well someone who's got a really strong constitution and i do this with animals as well that's the opposite. By the time you show a symptom, you've got to take it really seriously because it's probably been building up for a while. That's so that's so funny because we, we talk about the doshas a lot and that's what we call mm. the constitution. And it's like for me, it's interesting because I'm Vata Pitta and Vata Pittas typically um, will show signs quickly. But like I'm I'm I, that's my stubborn side. Like I'll I'm the person that will keep going and not stop. But that's that's something that I, I know I have to work on. But then Kappa Pitta, we consider a strong our kappa yeah kappa pit is like the strong the strongest constitution but they also you know they they usually can sometimes have poor health because yeah. they gain weight easily they're they're known to be look they're they're very sturdy people that's why so it's interesting because yeah we, we even we use the same thing weak or strong but it doesn't necessarily yeah. just your disposition it's just like the that's way exactly it. yeah good way of doing it yeah. it is just your disposition yeah and that can be inherited. Like my sister and I are both Vata Pitta. Our parents are Pitta Kappas. Our grandmothers but are both Vata Pitta. So it can kind of be passed down and skip generations. And so the way I think too with Western medicine, sometimes I think we, and we can react to things the way that our parents did. We can inherit the same type, but that's not necessarily, you can also skip generations. You can, so it's, it is your unique patterning. And that's, and that's, and they do the same thing with, uh, with dosha. They look in your eyes, they take your pulse yet to, mm. to get your, and they, they, you know, they'll ask you things beyond like, you know, that's, um, that's where I, I feel like the, you know, there is a place for Western medicine. Obviously there's, a place for it. um, and you know, if you, if you got an appendicitis, if your appendix is about to rupture, you need to get even an Ayurvedic doctor would send you straight to the emergency room. No, no mm. mushroom is, you know, you need to, you need to be looked at. You know, but and I know for most surgeons, at least the surgeons I know, surgery is still like the last, the last ditch effort. They nobody wants to open you up unless like you, you apps. There's no other way to to course correct. But the one thing that I love about these more holistic healings is that they look at your lifestyle beyond just what you're eating or beyond just what you're. They look at like when you go to, they'll ask you, how do you sleep? Do you have nightmares? Mm -hmm. Are you a light sleeper or a heavy sleeper? Do you, are you someone who needs a lot of sleep or can you funk? So they ask you all these other questions that, that are part of your disposition. That's not just food related or um, you know, exercise related that are, are the bigger picture of you as an individual, you know? And so, and so I think that's that, that gives us more in information on the energetic body of the person. You know, there's so many stories. If we relied on just the physical body alone, we wouldn't have the stories of mothers being able to lift up the car to get a child out from under a Mack truck. Yeah. Stories that defy the actual physicality of, of a body by the strength of the consciousness. And there is differences in the left and right side. There is, you know, the left side is traditionally um, feminine. The uh, right side is the masculine side. And this has to do with the energetic. So it's not saying mm -hmm. that you're... I, I don't want to say the word, but what the other side of our 
planet is yes. say, it's not there's not a, it's just these energetic uh properties the 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 upon the aponic side is, is the moon energy that's the downward that's the feminine the pranic side is the, the that's the masculine so even though the pranic side is a life force and is designated as masculine energy does not mean as a woman that you are masculine it's just mm. your right to you know you think about the masculine energy paying the bills defending the you know getting up and doing things whereas the aponic is more of the nurturing and it's finding that balance but because of that and what and we kind of talked about subtle body on your on your episode last week, Catherine. When you get into studying this, you start to notice that your left and your right side are two totally different experiences. So different. And also we're seeing each other upside down. So even the way our eyes work and the lenses of our eyes working, it's like a mirror image. So all these things about saying like it's a hologram, well, we're not seeing each other. You know, when I'm looking at you, not just on screen but in real life I'm seeing a mirror image of you because of the way our eyes react and it was so interesting actually I'm so pleased we're doing this today and we will come back to people to talk about the specific organs but um I saw Bruce Lipton last weekend live in London he was absolutely incredible and most people have heard of epigenetics so yes you've got your inherited um you know constitution your inherited traits however very few whether they're displayed or not is very dependent on environmental factors and environmental factors just doesn't just mean your food your water your air it also means the information the stress um the belief systems you're brought up with because 95 percent by the time we're an adult of um what's going on in our mind is in our subconscious mind which is programs that are just running often without us aware of it only five percent of the time we're in our conscious thinking mind so the beauty is is that the science behind it now it's so so developed in terms of understanding at first we thought it was all genetic and then we realized no 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 epigenetics and they said genes are switched on and off by the environment but no they're not it's not the genes are switched on and off it's which bit of that gene is opened up and transcribed into proteins that is. So once you, different people work in different ways, but when you really understand how much control you as an individual have got over your body and learn to listen to it. So, you know, um, fear is a big one that comes up for a lot of people, particularly in our community, because once you start discovering the world's not as you see it, yeah. It can be a very scary time for people. And also, once you realize that the world's been run by psychopaths, that can be a very scary time for people. And yes, fear is traditionally, well, it is energetically held largely in the kidneys. And when we say largely in the kidneys, it doesn't mean you're not holding tension and fear elsewhere in your body, but right. particularly associated with the kidneys. So if you're going through times of change and you recognize that you are sort of being pushed quite a lot into that fear state, supporting your kidneys in extra is going to be really beneficial to you um so all of these little bits of the jigsaw puzzle really add up to sort of empower each and every one of us as an individual to say right i recognize this is going on in my mind at the moment so therefore i need to pay a little bit more attention to this area of my body or my mind and 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 really so give yourself the support before it develops into a big issue and don't be as scared of it e either. You know, I, I I was saying this earlier today, where you have your weaknesses is usually where you find your strengths. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to look at that, we, and you're talking about subtle body too. And we said this on your channel last week, and I do think that this has been done intentionally. Um, you know, we look at like animals, you know, Robbie, my dog, basically is was wild he's and he's so astute to everything around like he's uh, constantly aware of everything around him at all times not like he's in a stress state yeah he's just in his body and most animals are but we have been kind of taken out of our bodies we we talk about disassociation a lot and so what tends to happen especially we said this last week um when i get new students people are aware of their gross body like you know when your quads mm -hmm. are sore and you're but they're not connected to their subtle body responses. And the more you work on this, the more you start to understand your body more and you start to feel, it's almost like your nerves wake up in a more subtle way. You know, for example, when we talk about the left and right, just using myself as an example, I, when I first, my first trip to India, I was working with an Ayurvedic doctor. That's when I first discovered the doshas and was really like, oh wow, this makes sense. 
and I was doing some healing treatments and I was having trouble with my right side and my right side, oddly enough, I'm right-handed. So usually your dominant side is the strongest side, but usually your undominant side is the more flexible. But for me, Mm. my right was the most flexible and the strongest. And so I kept saying, I'm having all these issues. I thought in my head that these must, because the right side is masculine, this must be more like daddy issues or Mm. me afraid of my own survival. That's what I was going to. And they did some examining on my body. They actually were, you know, they actually do not just like woo woo stuff, but they actually will actually examine it. And he sat down, he looked at me, he goes, there's nothing wrong with the right side of your body. The problem is on your left side and your right side of your body is overcompensating for the left. Meanwhile, I have had no pain on my left side. Mm. So when we start and then all of a sudden I start to realize like my right shoulder sinks lower, but my left hip sits higher. Mm. And the more I became aware of these, I didn't know this before I started to study this, that this was actually going on. I was able because sometimes the energy will crisscross through the body. You know, yeah. you have a right hip issue, but it might play out as a left shoulder pain. Yeah. When you start to study that, you start to go, oh, I, I see. You actually start to feel it and start to, to know. You know, I was telling my students, we talk about like, you know, another part of the prescription is obviously we, I, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but physical exercise. But we mm-hmm. said this last week, different exercises like different foods have different energy principles. And if you're, you know, deficient in vitamin C, then you're going to eat foods that provide you with vitamin C. You're not going to eat, you know, uh, there might have other nutritious foods that don't, you know, so it's finding that right balance. And, you know, cardiovascular is very, it, there's a, there's a, there's a importance to cardiovascular for the lungs and the, and the, and the heart, but people who overdo it tend to engage. They, they tend to actually heighten their stress. Yeah. You know, and that's that. But when we go to more to anaerobic, when you can actually calm the parasympathetic nervous system down, more work can be done in the healing principles of, of exercise than maybe going to run three miles. But that depends on the person. It all depends on where the person is in their disposition. And, you know, I was, I was telling my students, uh, one of my students this week, uh, for one of the classes that I teach, I, you know, I say, you know, we, we do like seven minutes in this class of cardio where I just have them do, you know, get their body hot and sweat. And I said, like, it's only seven minutes. And the only reason why I'm doing that is I'm trying to get you hot and I'm trying to get your blood pumping so that your blood can pump through your body so because rigid things break so that when we get mm-hmm. to the anaerobic work, your body is malleable and you can drop deeper into the anaerobic work, but it's only seven minutes. So I'm, I'm watching it like there's a very specific reason why I'm holding it at seven minutes and not beyond. And so when you find people like Catherine or myself or anyone in your your um, your community that has an education in this, they can work with you to help you find your in India. We call it your prescription. Mm-hmm. And it's not medicine. It's it's like no, that's like, the thing, isn't it? I love this. I love the fact that they've been taken. I mean, look at the inversion we see at all. They've taken a very ancient meaning of prescription and turned it into something completely different, where they're just looking at the isolates. Whilst, as you say, and the Indians, that prescription is literally looking at the true definition holistically of the whole mind, body, spirit. It's going to be different for every single person. Like now, <laughs> when we look at medicine in the Western world. The only difference is your weight, right? Like that depends, yeah. on, you know, and that's, that's the small part of it. And, you know, my teacher and, you know, Indian, I, it cracks me up. I always tell my students, like in the Western world, these yoga teachers have like sweet yoga voices and read poetry. And I don't because I teach traditional yoga, but in India, it's tough love. They're yelling at you. Yeah. And I say, you know, the, the beautiful thing that I've learned from my teacher too, and what I try to do, even though I'm not an Ayurvedic doctor, I can pretty much read somebody's dosha. And so as a teacher, for me, that's an important information for me to know, because that that is going to inform how I work with each individual student. So if I have a student that's like myself, that's very vata, I'm not going to yell at that student. I'm going to actually be very soft spoken. And I'm not going to be as much tough love with them because the vata yeah. is already going to have a heightened nervous system. And that's going to be counter counter to what we're trying to do. But if I have a COPPA student, they're going to re- typically respond better to tough love. You know, they're they're going to respond. So it's 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 that dip- disposition again, depending on you know if I have a student, you know if we, if you've got somebody whose disposition is vata kappa, they're missing pitta, then they're going to be the person that's going to be the exception to the rule in most cases. Obviously, there's going to be some mm. that are going to be broken where running is going to be good for them because they don't have the elements that's created. So it's all different. And I, and I hope, you know, we know in the eighties, I was born in 83, 
you know, we're coming into this world of jazzercise and Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers and this like template of, of like how to, you know, lose weight. And no, it's not one size fits all. Absolutely not. It's every single person is going to respond differently to different prescriptions. And so if someone watching right now, I hope that like liberates you a little bit. Like if you, I hear women say all the time how frustrated they get that they'll go, they'll change their diet with their husband and their husband will like just cut out like cookies and lose 10 pounds. Yeah. And they, but it's because you have different energies, you know, and, and women are going to be softer than, than, than men because that's, we're supposed to have a little bit of a higher body fat and having a little bit of body fat is not a bad thing, is it? We don't want no body fat, right? We don't Completely. want it. Absolutely. That puts your body in a sign and sending constant stress signals to your body as well. And I love the fact that when people can really start exploring this, I mean, even from what you've just described then, Bryce, imagine if teachers were aware of this or parents were aware of this so that they could really understand. We've spoken quite a few times before about, you know, have different children or different members of the same family that might be very, very need very, very different feet, food. Yeah you know absolutely. And meals absolutely and structure it's like the thing is now and it's very hard i find this really hard where you're trying to get people to think you know that we're in a generation now where everything's bite sizes and one si and you can't do holistic as a one size fits all you really really can't and the beauty is though that's why it's so effective that's yeah. why once you find your formula you'll find it works at a completely different level to anything else and I think all these little different bits of the jigsaw puzzle different people will be drawn to different ones at different stages in your life but as you go through and you accumulate this extra information suddenly think problems that you might have had for quite a while you'll have a different angle to approach it from and think oh okay Perhaps I need to look at getting releasing some of my old trauma um, or or perhaps I need to understand my body type more and my heritage strengths and weaknesses. Because we all know um, everyone's body, natural body type is different, but also everyone's way of dealing with stress is different. And if you understand that, you can really stop some of these awful problems occurring because they do build up they are silent killers and unfortunately you as an individual want to know what your body's telling you as soon as possible because the earlier you're aware of it the more easily you're going to be able to bring your body back into balance yeah and I, you brought up something really important and i want to about like the pattern the pattern of thought basically and just so you guys understand like when we are so conditioned to believe something in a certain pattern it's it's going to take time to, to change that way of thought. It's going to take mm -hmm. practice and constant working at it to, to change the patterning. And sometimes when our pattern of thought changes, it's going to react in our body. And so that might feel, your body might start to feel a little bit different because what's, you know, as, as, as above, so below, like as the mind, so the body. And so when the body starts, when the mind starts to accept a different way of thinking, the body is going to respond to that way of thinking with a different patterning. And I've noticed, you know, we talked about this on your channel uh, last week, Catherine. I'm, again, I'm going to tug that down, tag that down below. But I mentioned that I had thrown my scales away at 27 mm -hmm. years old, and I don't weigh myself unless I'm at the dock. I just don't do it. And I've never, Sorry, had, yeah. I've never had a weight problem. It's just that my mother struggled with her with some disordered eating, and so I just wanted to stop that pattern because I grew up, and it's not my mother's. I'm not blaming my mother. That was just the 80s in the Western world. It was the 80s and the 90s. Was exercise to be thin. My grandmother had a magnet on her refrigerator that said thin is in, right? That's why people dieted. They didn't diet for health purposes. It was to get skinny, right? It was a, an exercise was a punishment to get skinny. So I, the first thing I did was I threw my scales away. And so, you know, I know that we have a lot of people in the world that still think, oh my God, I don't want to be fat. So I'm going to go do a 10 mile run or, oh my God, I'm good. Well, again, educate yourself because just because running 10 miles is going to burn a lot of calories. It's not burning the right calories. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of runners end up swollen, right? It's not bringing your body into like this post metabolic metabolic state, like more anaerobic work does. But nonetheless, my point is like, if that's some the pattern you're you're trying to break, just be easy on yourself and know it's not going to change overnight. Even though you see the value in the new thought, you're still going to kind of start to resort back to old ways until it slowly evolves into a new way of thinking. And I would challenge yourself, like seeing your body as this incredible 
this incredible tool, this template that this creation of your soul. And when you're in that yoga practice or you're in that dance class or you're taking a walk, can you bring your mind's eye into your body and feel what's actually happening, where the sweat is accumulating? What's, what is it burning? What is, your, your skin is like the biggest detoxing organ you have. That's why it's important to sweat because it mm. removes things. Right. You see people who, who pick up exercise programs over time, they start to look, their skin looks better, right? Because they're detoxing from the inside out. It's changing from the inside Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And it's, and it's not a punishment. If you're viewing exercise as a punishment, I would say stop exercising for now and work on why you think your body needs to be punished and start to course correct that. That makes sense. You know, it's, there's magic in this. Your hair, for example, yeah. your hair is part of your nervous system. These are your nerves. That's and that's why it's so important, you know, things like the bioresonance hair test work so well. You said something really important there um, that I just wanted to pick up on. Uh, Coco's joining us now as well with my cat. Um, she always joins us for the coffee like, chat. like, duh, humans don't yeah. do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but people get really frustrated that change doesn't happen overnight. But seriously, when you think about it, it would be an absolute disaster for our survival if we changed overnight, because that means every time you ate McDonald's, every time a chemtrail went over, every time you had a major trauma, if your body changed like that, you'd be in trouble. We'd all be dead by now. Oh, so the, the fact that our body changes slowly over time is a really important survival mechanism. And when you sort of embrace that, it can really take the pressure off yourself for wanting quick fixes and quick results um because it really would be so dangerous if we responded to changes that quickly now of course you can you can go to a joe dispenser week-long retreat and really get into the zone and we know you can have spontaneous healing so i'm not talking about that um because that is done with a positive intent with a very set way of actually accessing the subconscious mind that's controlling the cell regeneration repair what are you trying to say coco um, she's telling me she's so she funny. thinks we're idiots. She's like, I can't it's believe you don't know this. How do you not know this? Um, so I think again, it's like when we understand why these things take time, it can really, really relieve the stress of it all and think, oh, thank goodness, because otherwise <laughs> I'd have built up a lot of bad, you know, bad results for my oh, body. God, yes. And the other thing is, is that is our bodies are I can't remember the exact number of cells that are dying off every second. It's millions and we're repairing all the time. So we all know that we don't look the same as when we did were 15 years old. We don't look the same as when we did when we were seven years old. We are recreating completely new bodies all the time and completely new programs in our mind, which are co controlling the creation of our bodies. So this is why sort of, really the most important thing yes there's basic good habits like exercise food water sleep breathing exercises but actually one of the biggest things we can all do for our health is really to become aware of our subconscious programs and work on changing those and there's so much advice about how to do that you know, it's interesting you bring that up my teacher in india would say like yoga is you learning to control your own mind like that's that's the source of all your problems is your mind um, there's a great book. I know I've talked about it before called Flow. It's written by a Hungarian. Yeah. Um, I loaned my copy out and I haven't gotten it back. It's been a few years, but it's great. He talks about like how people get in the flow and the power of the mind. I would highly suggest people reading this. And, you know, we're so, I think when we're younger, we're, we go through this phase where we're so reactive to our mind. And there is times where you need to be reactive to your mind. If you're being, yeah. attacked, if there are things where you need to react fast, you react fast. But most of the time for us, it's there's not there's not necessarily that need to react fast. There's there could be more contemplation. I had a student a couple of weeks ago tell me, and I was so happy this happened to her, where you know she was working in the class and sweating and discomfort in her body and her you know the negotiations of the mind telling you to stop, stop. And she goes, I kind of realized like I don't have to listen to my mind. And I was like, then you just found one of the cruxes of spirituality. You don't have to listen to your mind. Don't believe everything you think. And sometimes like the burning sensation, it's actually feeding your muscles. So your muscles are fine. It's the mind that's going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. You know, it's, yeah. it's muscles are actually getting strength from that and rebuilding and you're getting into that, that fascia and you're removing those, that, that, that held energy and, and then flushing it through your sweat. And so, you know, and then that takes time though. It takes time. Sometimes we have to become a slave to our mind 
in order to know that's not what we that's not what we want and that doesn't lead us to places of health and one thing too Catherine, I'm, I'm glad you brought up that we don't change overnight you there's no finish line too mm. like there's no point where you're going to be like you know when you're done you're when you're dead mm. that's when you're done so like, even like when you you know for for me i've been doing this for 18 years if I were to stop right now, everything probably would revert back to, I mean, I'm sure there's cer some certain patterns that have changed permanently, but my body would probably revert back to its weaknesses versus me constantly working on them and knowing that there's, it's never going to be, that doesn't mean you have to give like 110 every single day. There's some days where you're going to maybe just go for a light walk and you might have a beer with your friends one night. That's not, you know, there's, there's a balance there, right? And good thing we don't, because Lord, I lived in LA in my early twenties. If we just... I would be, I would definitely be dead. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, when, when, our, when we're younger, we all know we're more resilient. We're, our repairing, speeding up all the time. You've heard us talk about that loads of times. So I think I would like to ask about the heart because we talk about moving into a heart space and the heart is very associated with joy or lack of. So yeah. we're not talking about the emotions, we're talking about where joy is stored, but also where you might suffer if you've got a lack of joy in your life. This comes up the heart brain coherence so much in so many different ways, doesn't it, Bryce? Yeah, and it's interesting because it's so funny. You just we brought the heart too. I am um, in my fusion class. There are some things that I do that I was telling one of the other teachers who, you know, some of the things I do, I said, I don't tell the students this because I don't, you know, they want the vanity muscles, but I do it to strengthen the muscles behind the shoulder blade because that's holding up the heart. That's going to, because wow. it's, the back is also a part of the heart too. It's all a part of that. And we talked about this last week with the opening the chest center mm -hmm. and how people who, you know, energetically, if you've been heartbroken a lot, you're going to carry the stress of that yeah. you know, the pain in your neck. It's going to start to go like this and cave around it. You know, and part of that is reopening that. And, and then also the nerve endings that are on the front too. But when we talk about the joy, when we've experienced lack of joy, when we've experienced abuse or, you know, trauma, whatever it might be, stressors that in my mind, what tends to happen, it's not like the joy is actually gone anywhere because the heart's still there. But what has happened is there's been a react a reaction to the lack of joy that's causing the person to behave in ways that when they're in their balanced state they wouldn't they wouldn't normal. Does that make sense? Like when you're under yeah. like, like Stockholm syndrome, like and so people, you know, they say hurt people hurt people, right? So people mm -hmm. who have been hurt who don't work through that, who don't go through the the process of feeling that pain and working with somebody to rebalance that trauma or those stresses will continue to react in that state of reaction to this, the, the theft or the, 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 the disabling of the joy that radiates from the heart, if that makes sense. We see it with the hands because the, their energy points in your hands as well. And that radiates through, it's directly connected to Anahata, the heart energy point, that heart chakra. And so we see that with hands, like a hand can be used to smack someone or it can be used to lovingly embrace someone. It depends yeah. on what's happening here. You know, that's directing that. And so the arms are also associated, you know, opening. Like when you do a back bend, the arms have to be, you can't do a back bend like this. The arms have to allow for that. When you hug somebody, like it's important that your left side touches their left side so that you're hugging and embracing that energy center. I, what would you say would be for, for people, Catherine, who are trying to get back? And I want to say too, like being in the heart center doesn't mean that you take shit from people. No, like love that's a really first. good point. Yeah. It's not love. Taking shit from people because you love you love them, you have to love you first enough to put you can love people from a distance. You can love people but not like them. And learning those boundaries, there has to be boundaries on the heart. Right. So what would you suggest, Catherine, from your perspective? I think one of the most effective things from my perspective for the heart is breathing exercises is conscious breathing exercises and there's so many different ways you can do this you can do good old Wim Hof you can do more gentle yogic there's so many different yogic breathing exercises but when you're really focused and concentrated on your breathing it really brings your heart and mind into coherence and you can almost feel 
the opening up of your heart, not just in a physical sense, but in an emotional sense. And that's so, so important. But because when we go through, you know, we talk about, are you an open hearted person? And we know those are the people that we want to be around. And it can change the perception of um, of how you view and, and interact with every single person. I mean, quantum entanglement and carrying our field of energy, your heart center, gives off a massive energetic field. Um, horses actually have got the biggest energetic field that they've measured so far. But dogs, interestingly, in terms of body size to heart electronic field, are the, is the biggest. So, you know, we know what it's like when, when you have an open heart and you're carrying joy in your heart space, that resonates a huge amount outside your body and that will be picked up and will affect and bring more joy to every living being, whether it's plant, animal, human that you come into. So it's such an important thing to work on. And we, isn't it ironic, not, that one of the main side effects of these is heart issues? Because, again, you know, it's not an accident shutting down the joint. And I noticed something on my walk yesterday, Bryce, which is really interesting. So foxgloves are one of, uh, um, in, in homeopathic and herbal medicines, you've got hawthorn for the heart. But of, ho fo foxgloves, the, the plant, can also, were used in traditional medicine. They'd be a poison to someone with a healthy heart. But if you've got heart arrhythmia and heart problems, they're used homeopathically to readjust that. Now, in a time when so many people's hearts are being pushed falsely out of balance by a medical intervention, I noticed this year I've never seen so many foxgloves growing in nature. That's interesting. How bizarre is that? That's interesting. But it's so interesting. As you're saying this, like I'm getting chill bumps because I think about like, yeah, you're right, how important that is. We think about when a baby is born. Nowadays, they do skin on skin where they do it with both the parents right here. Yeah. They say that a baby is born recognizing its mother's heartbeat absolutely that's what it hears you know um i think about when my dog cuddles he cuddles here you know mm. and um you know it's we have this with the yogic breathing we have a bunda in our throat i talk a lot about mola and udiana which is in the base of the body because it's the physicality but the bunda in the throat is typically for breathing exercises and so when you're doing the the pranayama the breathing exercises typically you're in jaladara bunda which is tucking your chin in. and so mm. oops, sorry so what it does is it actually um when you tuck your chin, it's opening up the back of the neck, which is part of Shashuna. But when you tuck your chin in, it's really hard to tuck your chin in and to pull your shoulders in too. It like is naturally, right. yeah. You naturally have to kind of sit back. And so that's going to cause you to sit up straight as well, which also, so if you can, if you're opening your chest, not only are you opening that center, but you're also opening up your spine, mm -hmm. which is not really about the, the vertebrae or spine. It's about Shashuna, which is an energetic tube that runs from the base of your body all the way up through your spine, up to the top of your head, which is the, the channel of energy that carries Kundalini or Christ consciousness. So if you're bent forward, it, it, it gets, it's like a water hose. When it's bent, the water can't, it, it gets stuck. So that's another reason why this area has been attacked. You know, it's interesting as you're telling that story, I was laughing with you offline because um, today, the day we're filming this is the day of the um, debate between T and B in Atlanta. And so we were laughing about a few things, but I was telling you yesterday, I had gone down to, because I was, now sun therapy is also another aspect that I find super important. So I had like a few minutes. So I went down to, I live right by Piedmont Park, which again is like our, we have a central park in Atlanta, but it's like our New York central park. And I live right by it, not doxing myself. There's thousands of people who live around it, but we have a track and it's, there's a lot of trees that have been removed for the track. And so a lot of sun hit. So I went down there and I sat just to kind of get some, some, some sun. And I was telling you, I laughed so hard because this big black dude came, comes up to me and he was like, I'm sorry, but can I want to run the track and can I leave my phone? Would you watch my phone for a second? Why? And I was like, yeah, sure. He was like 30 minutes on the track. And then he came back. He's like, thank you so much. And, you know, I was telling you how nice it is that he obviously trusted me. Like, you know, he yeah. did, like, so you like somebody I could trust, you know, but that energy does. And, you know, I'm not going to run off with somebody. We were laughing how funny it would be if I turned around. If you saw you just putting off into the distance. With his girl running around. Yeah. But no, but, you know, so energy people, we as human beings do read energy. We do read, can read other people's. And this guy obviously saw me and was like, oh, she's not, she's just sitting here. So she's not moving. So she's got her bag and she's reading a book or whatever. And he trusted me. He doesn't know me. But he, uh -huh. you know, and so 
that energy of trust he felt with me. And so, and that wasn't, again, we, I don't know him. We don't know each other. There's 6 million people in this town. I don't know him. So that it does speak. That energy does speak. It does come out and speak. You know, you can feel that with people. And, you know, what's that? You say this a lot, Catherine, be the person your dog thinks you are. Yeah. So That's if you work on nice. yourself, you can actually be the person. And again, taking, having boundaries, saying no, saying no to somebody does not mean that you don't love them, does not mean that they aren't welcome in your life. Saying no to somebody, it, you don't have to be a doormat, right? That's just, that's just you being a martyr. You can put those boundaries up. And if you have a big force field around you, there is going to be boundaries. Mm -hmm. There is going to be boundaries of respect. You know, people who don't respect you, who treat you like crap, that's an issue that they, they're projecting their issues of their heart onto you. Right. So but you still often feel that they don't do it to people that have got a very clear energetic feel because we all know people where um, people never take the piss from them yeah. because they just know they're giving off that aura that they can't get away with it. So I think I've really encouraged people to go and look into this a little bit more. There's so many different places you can look up sort of emotional links to different organs, emotional links to diseases. You've got Louise Hay, who does some very basic ones, but very, very good. You've got loads of people that go into more details. I love a, Yvette Rose, metaphysical anatomy, whatever detail you want to. But quite often, if you've got these issues that have been um, rumbling on for a while and you've tried all the obvious things, and it's not working, then looking at this emotional link to where those emotions are held in your body can be absolutely life changing. And it's such a fun exercise to go through. I love it. This is my favorite besides gossiping about dead people from history. <laughs> This yeah. is the second favorite thing to talk about because it's it's magic. You are, you know, that's in a uh, Thoth's Emerald Tablets. Every tablet is the magic of something. He's talking about you. When he says magic, mm -hmm. that's you. You're the magic. And you know, one last thing to end on with um with we, we talk about this in yoga a lot, and you guys can look up studies on this. People who have a long term yoga practice actually alter their DNA. Their DNA. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, this is something mainstream science says isn't really possible, right? But we're seeing it and you know, it, it affects, my teacher will say that it'll affect seven generations beneath you. That altering is you literally, you are the one that's literally changing the family curses or talking, you're literally mm. actively changing your DNA by the consciousness that you work on every single day. So even if you are struggling through your yoga practice and you're do, but you're doing the work, it's still subtly changing. It's not for naught it's subtle you are there's subtle differences that are changing your you know and you know my i had a friend once a practitioner you know the old phone books we had back in the day for the yeah. young ones watching back when we were kids when Catherine and i were kids for the young ones watching they would send you a big book to your house that had everybody's phone number and address that's crazy to think about that everybody is crazy yeah crazy but the paper the, the paper of a phone book was almost like bible paper it was really thin, yeah really thin easily to rip well, my friend would say, think about all the papers. If, if every day the amount of change you make is the equivalent to that thin little paper over the course of time, over a year, that's a whole phone book. So it is these little subtle shifts. And again, you're never done. You're never, it's always a work in progress. There is no finish line. So you're really, and you start to, I, I have fun with this. Like I start to enjoy this. Like when I, you know, Ram Dass says, when you feel something like interesting, oh, my liver's off. Interesting. Now there's a puzzle for me to solve. There's a... Oh, it's so fascinating. I really do love it. It, it. You can have really good fun with it. And also, if you've got something more serious going on, this can quite often be the missing link um, to really shifting it once and for all. Because if you don't address the emotional link to it, it will likely come back. It'll come back, for sure. Because the, the root, the Band-Aid, you put a Band-Aid on, but you didn't get to the root issue. You know yeah. what's... And I believe because of this, we talk about these things and these side mm. effects that people are having. I'm not trying to take away the gravity of that. But if the mind controls everything, then there is an antidote to this. It completely is. You've only got to look at Wim Hof's story where he was injected with E. coli and it had no physiological effect on him. He, this, he has proven through scientific studies that you can control all these things. So as Joe Dispenza, I was listening to some of Joe Dispenza's latest research, absolutely phenomenal. So, you know, 
Yogis you know, have known this forever. Um, traditional health practitioners have known it together. But now those of you that need the science, the science is there. So yeah. if that makes that belief more real for you, go for it. Go for the science because it's all about those belief systems. You know, I was interacting with a, a client online the other day and they were sort of poo-pooing all these different things. And I was like, well, if that's what you feel, it won't work for you. Yeah. And that's not about believing everything. People are like, oh, well, you want to just believe everything. No, no, no. But it's like you can override even the most healing things with negative beliefs, and you can override even the most disastrous diagnoses with positive beliefs. And that's what's the, the famous Henry Ford quote, whether you think you can or you think you um, can't, you're yeah. right. You know, so whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. You're right. So it, it is the power of the mind. It is the power of, of, of and yeah, absolutely. It, nothing is impossible. The, the, the big trick, the, the biggest illusion of this world, of the, the establishment, I think, is for us to believe that we are an accident and that we are just, yeah. just, we're just an accident of nature. That's all that just came from monkeys and that, you know, things happen and that's it. No, I wanted to come from monkeys. <laughs> I've I never got over so that one. Adore. I didn't watch a lot of monkey videos. They're so adorable. There was one monkey. I, I literally, I think there must be some ancient, you know, off world monkey like thing that I've come from because I've always wanted to tell and not, not in the weird way that people do now, but in all seriousness, there are. I, I'll have to ask my boyfriend. There are some animal species, according to the Cassiopeians, that are third density like us. I know dolphins are actually third density. Yeah. Like we are. Monkey, different forms of monkeys might also be. I'll have to double check. Ask him because, you know, I I've, I've, I haven't got over the shock of not coming from monkeys. It's been a, a source of real disappointment in my life. <laughs> Meanwhile, we came from the giants. We came from the yeah, opposite direction. Exactly. We went down instead of up. Um, so, no. Yeah. It's, you're a fractal of God. You know, if you, if you have any religious belief or spiritual beliefs, like, this should not, this is like, this is proving that, that you are a fractal of God. Look at, you know, all the gurus, uh, even the modern day, Patavi Joyce, Iyengar, when they passed away, they were into their hundreds. And uh, Oh, absolutely. And they looked young. They just, their bodies just left. It was just time. But they looked young. You know, Patavi Joyce taught the day before he passed away, he was teaching. You know, so they just, and a lot of, they get, they say that a lot of yogis, they get to that point where they're just like, I'm ready to go. So they just decide yeah. it's time to go. Yeah. You know, the Himalayas, they're, when the Westerners went into, started exploring the Himalayas and their coats and their parkas freezing, they would pass by these camps with yogis and loincloths barefoot, totally fine. Because they had learned the power of the mind to control Completely. the nervous system. So again, okay, Hof went to Everest in shorts. There, That's just, yeah. Same thing, same thing. So if they can do it, again, going back to what I said at the beginning, we all have the same heart, the same lungs. We, we're, The template of our body is the same. So if they found the magic, so can you. It just takes effort to do it. That's that's levitation, right? We People who are Christian, you heard the story of Jesus walking on water. What is that? That's levitation. Mm. They're pictures, from like the turn of the century with Westerners finding these who are like levitating. That's the mind over mind over matter, right? So, so I, yeah, I might I might stop practicing that in all earnest. <laughs> you can just fly at that <laughs> Next point. Next time you see me, I'll be flying all over we the world. We don't room. need portals. Yeah. We can just levitate on other hover, hoverboards. Who needs a hoverboard when you are the hoverboard? You know? Exactly. So, yeah. so how are you going to un unlock that junk DNA if you don't actually start chiseling at it, you know? So... You guys, I want to know, so I was telling Catherine, this is, we could do like a whole series on this because there is so much. I mean, we're just scratching the act. I mean, we could do like three hours just on the foot alone. You know, Absolutely. there's so much to cover. And I was saying my friend Cindy, who's out of town right now, she's an expert in this as well. So if you guys want more of this, like if there are people who find value in this and, and we're kind of, again, as I've said this before, like I think Catherine, you, you don't mind me saying, neither Catherine or I are the arbiters of truth. We just have a lot of experience in this. Absolutely. And if something we've said, and that's my hope for all of my videos and probably you too, Catherine, is to talk about a topic that gives you information that to go and do your own research, to find your own teachers and to start that self-exploration. So, um, so please, you know, it's, there's, we live in, you know, everything is here. You can actually, even though it's monitored, you can actually find a lot of stuff on here too, that, you know, they don't think we're smart enough to figure it out. So prove them wrong. So 
Well, thank you so much, Catherine. I'm going to put, again, all of Catherine's websites, guys. If you want to work with Catherine, um, all of her Instagrams, you need to follow her on Instagram. She gives great. You can go and look at her Instagram posts to get more information so you can do your own research. All that stuff will be down in the description box below under show notes. Um, so you have to hit the show more button in the down arrow. I get that all the time. Oh, oh yeah, it is tricky, particularly on YouTube Shorts. No one can ever find the description. If it's a YouTube Short, you have to click the three dots and then it will bring up the description. But we don't have a choice about how it's it, described. Yeah, there's nothing we could. That's just how YouTube has designed it. And actually, don't blame them because the description box can get quite long. Yeah. So they shorten it. You just have to hit either the, if, depending on the device you're on, either your phone or your laptop, you have to hit the down arrow or the show more button. And that will give you the full. So show notes is always there. And everything referenced in every episode, links are all under show notes, you guys. So it's there. Um, and just, uh, yeah, if you still don't understand what we're saying, go find a grandkid or a Generation Z person. And they can come and uh, show you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's your eight-year-old your eight -year -old niece to come show you how, how to do it. So, yes, you guys. All right. Well, thank you, Catherine. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Let I'll us know what down. questions you've got. Let us know what you've noticing and any good resources that you've got. We're open to all of them. Yeah, we Bye. should do, if this is, Catherine, if you ever want to do something on childbirth, because there's a lot we could say about the uterus and childbirth. If you guys want more information on that, let us know, because that's a whole other show we could do too, on the female anatomy and how, yeah. So anyway, guys, all right. Brilliant. Take care, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.